So during the video, I forgot to mention one important thing, and that is the Hyperscape Hub, which is basically an interactive menu where you can do all kinds of things like check out the store, go to the training range, and also queue for a game. And when you queue for a game, you can do squads with or without Phil, which is pretty cool. And there's also a solo mode if you're into that kind of thing. How's it going guys? My name is Doe and I hope you're doing good. And today I want to give you a guide slash overview for a game called Hyperscape, which is a free to play battle royale from the folks at Ubisoft. And it does have its own launcher. I should mention that because this actually almost maybe not put the game at all, but I put my freaking feelings aside for hating just installing so many launchers and I tried out the game and it is a lot of fun. Ubisoft did a great job at improving a lot of just boring mechanics and other battle royales and making them actually enjoyable and unique in their battle royale. So you'll come to find out the game is really fast paced, a lot of fun, and there's a lot of counter play. Sometimes. Sometimes there's not, which is, you know, what, what can you do? Anywho, Hyperscape is a very fast paced battle royale, and like other battle royales, you have a pretty standard way of winning, which is just being the last squad standing. Or you, oh, that's the last okay, guys. Or you lose if your whole squad's dead. Now if your whole squad isn't dead and at least one person's alive, you can pretty much always revive your teammates if you go to a respawn beacon, which can appear on any enemy dead body. Which is a phenomenal change because in other BRs you have to go and collect banners or revive them where they died and it's just, you get camped or you just can't do it because the zone closes. But in this case, the respawn beacons are basically always moving and until like the last team's alive, there's a really ample chance to revive your teammates and get them back in the fight, in which case they're not waiting around doing nothing. And when they are dead, they're not waiting around doing nothing. They can move around, interact, give you intel. They're a part of the game if they want to be. And another way of winning is by holding a gold crown for a duration of time, in which case if you reach this duration of time and you have the crown, then everyone else on the map just explodes and you win. And at one point this happened to me and I was like, bro, this dude's hacking. He killed me without even shooting me, but it was just the game and me losing it. So that's how that goes. Now the gold crown's pretty annoying in my opinion because in this game you can get away from a lot, you can run really well, which I like a lot, but with the gold crown it is pretty freaking boring. You can also stack walls for days. So this is not the uh, the strong point of the video game if you ask me. Now the gold crown doesn't come out to play until late in the game like I said, and at this point there isn't really much environment left in the first place, which to explain that, Instead of having a zone closing in on you like a giant circle, instead you have entire sections of the map that just dematerialize based on how many players are left, which is just insanely smart. Like this is just so smart it's not even funny. Because in other BRs you'll have freaking no one alive in like the first like circle, the first round, and you're just like bruh, time to wait 10 more minutes and not see a single soul. So. In, my, in Hyperscape, that's never happened to me, not even once. And in fact, I barely ever have to run from the zone that far, except for one game. One game I got kind of railed, and I had to run from the zone for days. Is the map ending... Oh, we're like in... We have to go. But we're good. Oh god, no we're not. No we're not. And to be honest, it wasn't that bad because in Hyperscape, you have so much movement that if you're just paying attention, you can get out of the zone really really fast like covering 400 meters in probably i think 20 seconds if you're using your movement correctly because in this game you can you can sprint and then shift to uh to slide sprint slide sprint slide you can do that very quickly and it's a really fast movement it's an important tip to keep in mind when you're running from an enemy group because you can outrun them cats like crazy and using your environment is also pretty important as well, which is another factor that I really enjoy in this game is the outplay potential. And that's just in movement alone, not even mentioning the hacks or abilities, which I'll be covering next, but just the movement, man. Going through buildings, going through alleys, hopping over buildings, dashing through windows, just all kinds of stuff you can do to sort of run away from people. And if you do it really well, you'll be really annoying to certain people. Now, as far as the uh, abilities in the, or in this case, the hacks go, you have a decent number. What is that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. You got 12 abilities, 12 hacks is what they call them. I'm going to call them abilities because hacks sounds kind of dumb. And to start off, I'll just list them in the order in which they are basically shown to you in the training grounds. You have wall. You create a protective wall. This can be stacked like freaking May wall in Overwatch, except it doesn't need anything to float on top of, which makes no sense. It gets ridiculous. I hate it because of that. So you can use things like slam, which is a giant leap in the air and you can slam down and use that and wall to just wall yourself in the air. I don't use wall that much personally, but it is pretty annoying to deal with and it is a really good thing to use in buildings because you can block off entire sections of a building 
and escape using that. Then you have the mine where you can place a homing mine. This can be placed at a distance and it has a pretty big aura or a, I guess a, a trigger range in which case it'll just start tracking somebody. If you're in line of sight for it for too long, it'll just be like buh, 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 and just chase you, chase it down, bro. And it homes you, bro. It, it cuts them corners pretty clean most of the time. Other times it, just, it gets stuck in like really weird places and doesn't track you. It's weird, man. I'm not sure what to say, but hey, it's the way she goes. Next up, you have invisibility. Become invisible for a short duration of time. When you're invisible or whenever someone's invisible, you will hear like an invisibility cloak, which gives you a decent indication of where they're going, but it is still pretty easy to lose someone if you create enough distance between you and them. You can also hear the footsteps, so keep that in mind whenever someone goes invisible. And you are also not immune during invisibility, which is great. You also have reveal, which shockingly enough, reveals enemies ahead of you. Life changing, I know. It's really revolutionary. Whenever you're the person getting revealed, it sends you on this crazy trip and your screen's just doing like this crazy wave thing going. You got like lights going on, all kinds of stuff happening. A similar experience whenever you step on a car in in uh, hyperspace, escape, whatever the game's called, and you'll set off an alarm. Now, next up, we have heal, which is where you plant an aura that heals yourself and allies in this aura. It can be planted from a distance or directly on your feet. It's wherever you're pouring your cursor, that's where you plant a giant circle. And heal may not seem like a crazy good pick, but trust me, it's pretty good because in Hyperscape, there is no armor, there's no self meds. Instead, what you have is passive health regeneration that happens if you can remain just unhit by enemies for a certain duration of time, like probably more than 10 seconds, which is a long time in a game as fast paced as this. So having the ability to drop a heal and just get that health up, even when we're getting shot at, is very valuable. It's damn near invaluable if you ask me. Moving on, we have armor, which is where you block damage temporarily, and by block damage, it means all forms of damage, whether it's melee, rocket launchers, anything, you will block the damage until the duration is up. And it's annoying because you just see this person that's one shot and you can't kill them. You're hitting them, but you can't kill them, so it's a, it's a trip. Next up, we have ball, which is where you bounce in a protective sphere. This is probably the biggest throw pick of a hack, if you ask me, but some players make it work and they can survive with, like, using the ball and invisibility and just cycling cooldowns, it's annoying. We have teleport. This is a really solid movement ability. You can teleport a short distance ahead, and this can go in any direction you're facing, whether it's vertical, horizontal, diagonal, whatever the case, you teleport that distance. It's a pretty solid pick. Then we have shockwave. You emit a shockwave, and it's wherever your cursor is facing. There's a certain distance in which you, you can't actually shockwave someone. This can be used to lift people in the air, it does damage to enemies, and it can be used to lift yourself in the air if you're holding the space bar and you shockwave beneath yourself or somewhere near your character and you're in that sort of uh, aura that it emits. And lastly, we have slam, which is where you jump really high in the air and you slam down. And you jump really freaking high, so it's really great movement, and the slam can be used for just really solid damage if you need it. And it also knocks enemies in the air where you can track them pretty consistently if you know the distance in which they get lifted. Oh my god, I'm getting bopped. Holy crap, they don't miss. Now, when you do slam, you are stuck in an animation for a, a really short duration of time, probably a second or two. This can be pretty deadly if you roll up on the wrong neighborhood. So to cancel the slam animation, if all you want is the mobility, you're going to want to use your melee or bring out your melee, which is the three key, or shoot during the jump portion of this ability because all those actions will cancel the slam portion and just leave you with the mobility of the jump instead. So those are the abilities and hacks, now it's time to discuss the guns. So first off, you have the Mammoth MK1, which is a pump shoddy, and oh my gosh, this thing can tilt me all the way up a wall, because a gamer can miss all their shots, but if you land one good shot with a really decently upgraded shoddy, bruh, you get one tapped and it makes me cry a little bit on the inside. But moving forward, we have the Riot 1, which is a heavy pistol, this thing feels very good to play, it's got some really awesome gunplay mechanics going for it. And using a, using a pistol in any video game feels great. The next pistol feels like trash. This is a D-Tap. This is a targeting auto pistol. It will aim for you, and you, all you have to do is hold down the shoot button, and it'll shoot for you as well. This feels like absolute garbage. I don't like it. Now, the nice thing is it doesn't do much damage, but if you can't land your shots, the enemy definitely can if you're using the D-Tap. So just keep that in mind, all right? If you hear that gun firing off and you're not really feeling kind of crispy with the shots, get behind some cover, because you will die. Uh, next up, we have some more very high-skill weapons. Skybreaker. This is a single-shot energy cannon. 
It's a giant ball that does a lot of damage and it can hit the entire enemy team and more if you aim it correctly because it's got a really big explosion. So it can do some pretty significant damage. Then we have the Salvo EPL. This is a explosive projectile launcher, aka a Granadra launcher. This is absolutely annoying and just ridiculous to deal with indoors. If you hear some gamer with a bazooka cannon indoors, get out fast because you will lose that. I'm telling you, unless you can one shot them, you're dead. Then we also have the Komodo, a plasma blast launcher, aka an RPG that shoots some freaking plasma. This is again ridiculous. They gotta they gotta nerf these. I don't care what you say, they gotta nerf these. They're tilting to play against indoors. I can't stand it. Now we're moving on to some more high skill weapons, which are also a bit busted. The Protocol V, single shot sniper rifle. This is just a bolt action sniper rifle. And it does some pretty insane damage, if you ask me. If it's upgraded all the way, it can one-shot to the head or do 80 damage a body shot if it's legendary status. And as a comparison, the Riot 1, the heavy Deagle pistol, only does like 57 damage legendary status to the head. What? I don't know about y'all, but that seems a little scuffed IMO. Anywho, moving forward, we have the sort of a rifle section of this list. Which is going to be starting off with the Hexfire Automatic Gatling Gun. This has the largest clip of any weapon in the game. So if you want to hold M1 for days, this is the weapon you'll choose. It doesn't do the most damage out of the rifles, which is good because that'd be kind of scuffed. But it does have the largest magazine count. Then we have the Harpy, a very fast firing SMG. And this is the go-to pick for a lot of players just because of the damage output and how fast it fires. But if you can't track very well, it'd be very hard to control. Then lastly, we have the Ripper, a full auto assault rifle, and this is pretty decent for medium range, but you, you probably just rock a sniper and the harpy, as most players do. Now, all these weapons do feel pretty good in their own right. There are some weapons that are just better for, than others with certain playstyles, but that is for you to determine on your own and to create basically your own playstyle. And it should be taken into account that Ubisoft has already nerfed things that were pretty busted beforehand, and the game is still in open beta, so there are some more changes buffs and nerfs to come in the future to things that might be overtuned or undertuned in the game currently but that's the video guys hope you liked it if you did make sure to drop a like helps the channel a ton and if you want to subscribe for more gaming content in general because i play a lot of games i'm pretty decent at games i play hopefully and as far as hyperscape goes the game is fun like it's fun it's not even the whole oh it's fun with friends it's like no it was fun by myself down the game play by myself i had a good time so hopefully y'all will too but I gotta say, thank you all again for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.